partially defiant, partly concerned when you look at both of those posts. You know Kobe well, Stephen A. What do you make of these comments? Well, obviously he's very, very concerned because he understands the challenge that it lies before him. He's 34 years of age. He was just completing his 17th season. He's logged exactly 54,031 minutes in his career, by far more than most, if not anybody that's ever played the game of basketball, with the exception of a couple of dudes. The reality of the situation is it's an incredibly daunting task, but he's up for the challenge. The question is going to be whether or not the Lakers are going to be up for the challenge as well. Remember, there's still the amnesty clause that they have available to them. They have from July 1st to July 14th to decide whether or not to exercise that amnesty clause, which would allow them to get rid of his salary. Clearly, they'd still have to pay him money, but it wouldn't count against their cap, and it wouldn't count against their tax. And they've been all about saving money over the last couple of years. We all know that because Jim Buss has made it a point to make sure we know that. So the reality is all of those things are things that Kobe Bryant has to think about. But he also has to think about whether or not he can do this. I know he can do it. I know he knows that he can do it. But at the same time, what are you coming back to? Averaging 45.2 minutes in a month of April, even though you're in your 17th season longer than anybody in the league. Averaging 38.6 minutes a game. Second, on a tie for second with a rookie in Damian Lillard of, of Portland. And, uh, and second only to Luau Dang of the Chicago Bulls. The minutes that he's logged throughout this season. Remember, against Dallas, it was 47 minutes, 4 seconds. Against Portland just the other night, it was all 48 minutes. Had he not gotten hurt last night, he was going to do all 48 minutes again. You don't hear that kind of stuff taking place with somebody that's played 17 years, in the, that's in the 17th season in the NBA. You do not see that. You do not hear about it. It is unthinkable that it ever happened, but it did. And the Lakers are going to have to answer for that in the weeks and months to come. Because in my mind, it was entirely inexcusable, which is something I've been saying for weeks. Stephen A., let's go back to the amnesty provision. It would save the Lakers some money, but it would be a public relations disaster after all the things that have yes, happened in L.A. this year. This would be the topper. I mean, what are the chances that the Lakers would actually make a move like that? Man, I would think I would like to believe absolutely impossible, but we're talking about Jim Buss here. We don't know what he's going to do, my Lord. You don't even see him. I don't know how many games he's shown up to. I don't hear about him showing up in the office. You don't see him around. You certainly don't hear him commenting about the Los Angeles Lakers, even though he's the man assigned to run things. You see more of Jeannie than you do of her brother, Jim Buss, so that's really the reality of the situation. If you're talking about saving money, then you're in a situation where you can amnesty Kobe because Jim Buss, for all we know, may be of the mindset he's going to miss next season anyway. So why not amnesty him as opposed to having to worry about this $30 million of his salary counting against our cap and against our tax? Now, again, I think it's absolutely criminal if something like that transpired. I think it's a slim to none chance that it will because it would be a public relations nightmare. And essentially, you're saying goodbye to Kobe because that means he wouldn't be allowed to come back and play for the Lakers next season. But this is Jim Buss we're talking about. I'm not about to sit here and act like we definitively know that this man is going to do something that makes sense. Look at some of the other decisions that have been made when it pertains to the Lakers, and that would be cause for trepidation, wouldn't you say? I would agree, Stephen A. Before we let you go, let me just ask you this. Um, we kind of know Kobe probably can't go out on a note like this knowing his competitive fire. That being said... He won't. That being said, how will this channel him in the offseason? How will he use what's happened here to push him forward to next season, knowing the competitor he is? Well, first of all, Kobe doesn't need to, to do much in a, in a form of channeling. He's always channeled. He's always locked in. He's always on a mission to be widely recognized as one of, if not the best, to have ever done it. This is what his mentality has been about. From the time he came into the league as a rookie, he was on a team bus with Shaquille O'Neal and told Shaquille O'Neal to his face, I'm going to be one of the best who have ever played this game when all is said and done. Talking about how many rings he was going to win, how many league MVP and scoring titles he was going to win, he has always been channeled. This is just the latest. And also, let's keep in mind that the man who trains him is widely considered to be one of the best who have ever done it in Tim Grover. This is the same guy that trained Michael Jordan. So just keep that in mind. He's got the best in terms of rehabilitating himself. I have no doubt he's going to have the best as it pertains to whoever operates on him. And in terms of his own individual work ethic, commitment, and focus, 
he can give lessons on that to almost anybody on the planet. No doubt about it. Work ethic never been in question. Stephen A. Smith, working hard for us. Thanks so much, Stephen A. Appreciate it. All right.